lot of water under the bridge. Some of the old songs, Sam. Yes, ma'am. You know, you always start out with the, the crappy cars and then you eventually, you either move on or you just um, just put, put time into something you really, really enjoy, so. How long has it taken you to get it to this point where it's at today? Uh, so I've owned the car for about, coming on five years, honestly, um, but I only seriously started putting real time and effort into it probably is two and a half years after I've owned it. Um, so it started out auto, um, non-turbo and red, just like a normal stager would. And I actually, I actually posted up a Facebook cover photo of the car and I had the caption like, time to move on or time to sell it, something like that. And then my mate Regan, uh, he just miss he just commented and said, "Why don't you put a 34 front on it?" That's literally where it all started, and I was like, "Damn, that's like I could probably look into that." Guards are metal, the metal welded, which is quite rare for like a conversion. And yeah, the whole the whole front end swap was done in done in about a week. That's really where it all stemmed from, you know. And then the next thing, I was like, I need to get it painted now. So I really got ins inspiration off um, the emerald green on S14s. Uh, my brother had one, and I was like, man. I really like that colour and so I just I just talked to talked to the painter and I just showed him some photos of what I wanted and he's pretty much like yep sweet and that's what he came up with like I could have gone red or black or white but like it's a unique car so I wanted a unique colour and I do I do understand that stages do come in a forest green similar to that but You'll never see one that colour with that front end on it. Hi, I'm Aaron and this is my 1997 Nissan Stager. Uh, so it was about a month since we recorded the last segment of this actually. It's obviously we've changed location. Um, and in, during that time, car's actually been pink stickered. Um, so if you don't know what a pink sticker is, it's kind of like a defect in Australia. Or So it pretty much means I cannot drive it until it's been through. It just needs to get checked over. So I'm just starting the cert process for it. Um, 
Uh, I've never gone for a cert in my life and I, I have a fair idea of what to expect but I know it's just a huge buck around. Um, so after, after this, the car is certified I can go for a warrant, get a warrant and then just buy a registration and then I can legally drive it on the road. That's, that's like a couple, couple thousand dollars by the sounds of it. I've got different wheels on it at the moment and those are going to be my wheels I certify the car on. Uh, they're a bit skinnier and I can get a smaller tyre on there legally. So me and my mate went for a, a cruise out to the beach. We were coming back home. Um, I was probably, probably a kilometre from my house. Really close. And um, my mate said cop, cop, cop. I looked over. He just went past me at that time. I looked over, couldn't see it, a cop. And then I, then I just overtook this car in front of me. I was going 120 and an 80. My mate said, oh, the cop's turning around. And yeah, I got pulled over, speeding, 40 over the limit. Um, still waiting for that fine to come in the mail. And he pretty much said, yeah, he said my registration was on hold, which it is. And he said, what's illegal about the car? And I told him, and he put a sticker on my car. But I got to drive it home from that spot. He said, I don't want, I don't want you leaving your $40,000 car on the side of the road. So he was, it was actually, I got lucky not to lose my license at that point. There's a guy called uh, Daniel Stryker on Facebook and he pretty much sells all this and parts and I've bought a few things from him. And yeah, I had 2000 to play with, $2,000 and I was just looking for a cheap car, really. And he said he had a stage here for sale, Waffen Ridge rear wheel drive, automatic, non-turbo, and I was like, sweet, I'm coming to pick it up. Um, so I went to Waiwera and I picked up the car and pretty much drove it back to Whangarei, just buying stock, Warren and Rego. And then, you know, for, for all my cars at that stage, I would just chuck wheels on them, uh, just lower them a bit, and then just sell them. Never really got into, like, doing it up, like, really crazy. A good memory of it when it was uh, non-turbo auto, we went to Right Road, uh, you Whangarei guys will know about it, um, and I just had all the boys in the back and we were just neutral dropping it like probably 15, 20 times just to try to get the wheels spinning <laughs> and fuck it was good fun man, that box took a, took a hiding. Um, so the, when I got the stager it was my only car and I work at a pizza shop and so I would be using that to deliver pizzas in when it was bone stock. Um, I was spending about 180 bucks a week on fuel. Yeah, it was it was not the best, but paid the bills. And I'm still actually at that pizza shop today. You know, I've been there for I've been there for four and a half years, I'd say. Sponsored by Hell Pizza, man. For the body kit, it's pretty much just got front bumper, side skirts, and rear bumper. There's no white body or anything. So the front bumper I just bought off um, Luxury Sports. Um, the side skirts, actually Ryan in Auckland, he actually has a stage here. He had some for sale for about $300. And I was like, sweet, I'm coming to pick those up. And they fit pretty good for just fiberglass. I wanted to keep fiberglass at a minimum on this car as much as I could. Uh, the hood's steel, the guards are steel. Um, yeah and um, the rear bumper. So I was getting some exhaust work done in Carmo. I had the stager there and, and the guy the guy was actually like, hey, are you after a rear bumper for one of these? And I said, oh yeah, could be, could be interested. And he said, go next door. Uh, this guy's got a rear bumper in his shop. It's been there for five years. And I was like, all right, I'll head over there now. So I went over there and I had a, I had a chat to him and he said, yeah, the guy gave me this bumper as payment for some work I did and he went to Aussie and never came back and he said I could have it for free, it just needed a bit of um, fiberglass work. So I got that rear bumper for free, I probably wouldn't have found one any other way and you know just luck, just stumbled across it. It's, it's pretty nice, it's really big, I just, wanted, I just wanted low, just big kit and low and big wheels. So the car is factory two wheel drive. So I pretty much got a 20 deck gearbox, crunchy second of course. I got a R33 coupe drive shaft for it. 
it just bolted straight up, uh, the shifter was in the right spot and the drive shaft fit. Uh, my mate actually ended up doing the conversion for me for 400 bucks. The R33 clutch pedal, on these cars they have a foot handbrake. So before the manual conversion I had to convert the handbrake to a handbrake. So it's pretty much just an R33 handbrake mounting bracket. You just drill out the tack welds and then we've just welded it to the car and just bolted the handbrake to it. And the R33 cables just fit right up. While I was doing the engine, I actually just pulled out the old gearbox, 20 deck gearbox, and I sold that for 500 bucks, crunchy second. Um, and now I've got a two wheel drive converted uh, R33 GTR box that came out of a drift car, funny enough, and it's actually pretty mint. Same internals as a big box actually, so just a poor man's big box. I didn't, I didn't know what direction to go for drive shaft, so I've actually just uh, got made a single piece drive shaft uh, from BCE Precision Engineering in town. Uh, that was quite pricey, about $1,800 for that alone. It has a Sylvia LSD diff in it, and it's got full set of Hakon arms in the rear, and BC Gold suspension. Uh, the suspension's really nice, I'd recommend it for anyone. 32-way um, adjustable. You can have it max soft or max hard. Camber plates, really easy to do. Camber in the front. So we pulled the motor out um, after the manual conversion, and I just got the car at Warren, and we just pulled the motor out. So that was that was some bad timing on my behalf, but it was around my birthday actually when we started that on the 4th of August. While while the motor was out, um, I I just said fuck it, and I got the engine bay painted. So originally I wanted a black with just some red flake in it. Very simple, subtle, um, but the painter actually, he sent me a photo and he's like, hey, this is the color I got, I don't know how. I can redo it if you want or we can just run with it. So I was like, yep, let's just run with it. Um, so originally not the color I was after, but it still looks pretty good. I feel like it contrasts with the green quite nice. It's still a dark color. Like if it was a yellow, maybe not, but. So we pulled the motor out of my shed, dad wasn't too happy. So I actually bought a factory uh, 25 dead series 2 engine. I bought it off a guy and he said it was his parts engine which was a bit of a red flag for me. When I got the engine all I wanted to do was head gasket, head studs and big turbo whatever. And then once we pulled the head off that new engine, we noticed the ring lands on the, uh, the piston ring lands were cracked and I was like damn. Uh, so having no other options really, uh, we pulled the pistons out and I bought a set of the NZ Performance I believe they're called. They do an engine package and it's just ACL race bearings, ARP, main studs, head studs, a metric head gasket. Which I actually wanted to go Tomei but I just ended up using that anyway. Um, it came with Eagle rods and CP pistons, 86.5mm oversized. I was struggling to find parts in like like main like distributors to get parts from and I got in touch with Rapid Performance and they could just get whatever I asked for and they were really good with advice um, so I bought a, a deal for a complete hot side so that was a uh, HX35 RS Steve Merck Turbo which is to be honest a bit small for a 2.5 to 6 cylinder um, and that yeah, also came with the turbo uh, Cinco manifold it came with all the uh, new duds for the manifold and nuts and turbo drains and it was perfect, bolted up nice. They had two options, one with AC, one with no AC. I actually do have AC in this car, so I got that and it fitted up good. Uh, I just bought a China front placing plenum, that's probably the only China part in the engine bay. I heard the uh, the cast ones are a bit better than the, the shiny chrome ones the chrome cracks apparently, that's what I did, so that's what I went off. I haven't had too many issues with that. Fueling, so we've got a 340 LPH fuel pump in there. It's just in tank, no modifications, in the cradle. We've got stock fuel lines and we've got 725cc injectors on a top feed aero flow rail and just a brand new stock uh, fuel filter. And so for cams we're running uh, Kenford, I'm not sure on the degree, I'm sorry. They're not overly lumpy. The tuner has dropped a bit of a lump in there, just a manual lump, not even like the cam. I heard the bigger the, bigger the loads on the cams, the um, the less low-end torque you have, so I was I was happy. I wasn't too concerned about the, 
the lump, but the tuna has put a good lump on there. For oiling, we've got a billet oil pump gears and an in one oil pump housing for it. Oh, that was about two grand. That's just ridiculous. And we've got a we've got a head drain, and we do not have any oil restrictors in the block. Uh, so I've got a 45 mil Turbo Smart wastegate, and that was actually included in the uh, rapid performance hot side I bought, which is really loud. Um, my external wastegate shoots flames. It's great. I love it. So it got tuned at, uh, by uh, JT Performance in Auckland, pretty well known, well known tuner, and it made 313 kilowatt on 16 psi. Uh, that's about 418 horsepower, which honestly I'm not trying to be biased, but that is plenty enough for the street. But my goal was 400 kilowatt, just just to, just to flex. Turbo rear housing was my letdown. Uh, that turbo is good for two liters, Sylvia's and stuff like that. But it, it pulls boost 16, 16 psi was where it was most efficient. So it just pull boost, pull boost all the way up to like 7.5 I believe. The red line is 8,000, comfortable for those cams and uh, upgraded valve springs as well. So for the ECU we're running a Haltech 750 Elite. I, I wanted the 2000 but it was a bit out of my price range. And I've got a brand new wiring harness from JT Performance. Uh, man's good at his job, he knows what he's doing. And it's really clean, all sleeved and beautiful. So for my wheels, I bought some Wedge Cerberus 2s. I bought those for $1,800 and they were like 18 by six and a half or seven and a half. So I, I pulled those apart and I ordered some lips off VR wheels. Really good, they're American site. The lips arrived in about a week and a half. Very fast shipping for American standards. And while the centers were out, I didn't want to just go chrome like everyone else does, even though arguably it would probably look better. So I just went with the, um, the R32 GTR gray and I've chucked a lot of gold flake in there as well. And I've also got the barrels painted black, which I, I would recommend to anyone because if you've just got gray barrels, it just kind of washes out everything and you see the barrel more than you see the dish. And I've got some 23540 tires on here. I've got some semi-slicks in the front and I've got some good rides in the rear. So they went from a 7.5 and now they're a 10.5 and about roughly 12p offset. I've got a pair of bride bucket seats in there, really comfortable. And I got those for about $500 for the pair. I just had to buy sliders. R33 fits in a stage year. A lot of R33, R33 parts fit in the stage year. I've got a IC7 Heltec display as my dash cluster. And I've brought a Haltech IC7 shroud. So the IC7 sits in the shroud and it mounts up. And that was actually off Marco Motorsports in Australia. I've got some leather back seats I bought uh, for a couple hundred dollars. Um, I just wanted like leather back seats and then just the brides in the front. You know, party in the back, brides in the front. I've got a cargo net I actually bought off my mate for 50 bucks. I think it's to stop dogs jumping from the boot into the back seats of the car. So I've got an S15 steering wheel, they actually bolt up to these. The Stagia steering wheel is really clunky and big and pretty disgusting to be honest. Um, the S15 is quite small and quite nice and I'm actually thinking of just taking it off and getting it redone because it's starting to peel all around the wheel really. I've got a naughty knobs, shift knob, looks really nice, it's weighted as well. So I went down to my local uh, Arthur's Emporium, I went just looking for fabric for my door cards and I just found a fabric that looked pretty fuzzy and I just cut it to fit and then I've actually just shoved it in the crack with a screwdriver, it's nothing too flat. Um, so if, if I had to sell the car, um, I wouldn't want anything under 35000 It may not be worth that, it may be worth more than that, but I'm looking at the market and you know, you can buy a stock spec R S15. Slow, boring, ugly, I don't, I don't personally like them. I don't personally love them when they're stock. Um, you can buy those for 35 grand, or you can buy this for 35 grand. You know, it's hard to value a built a built motor and 
good gearbox. All these Sylvia's come with 20 depth boxes, are slow, like, I don't know. I, so I'm sticking around 35 grand, but it honestly, it means more. It means more to me than just money, you know? It's, it's all I've got, really. Um, it's just a sentimental thing, pretty much my life at this point. And I don't see me selling it anytime soon. I think I'll crash it before then, to be <laughs> honest with you. Hey, what's going on guys? Thought I'd just pop in at the end of this video just to say uh, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you guys like this style of video. This is the first ever kind of interview that we've done before and I can't think of a better way to do it than with Aaron's car. We're looking to do a ton more of these in the future, so if you want your car featured and you've got a cool story to tell, then hit our line. We've got our Instagram, our website, all our contact information. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you're looking forward to seeing some more in the future. Also, don't forget to shop down below at our website, projectmedia.co.nz. We've got lines from ourselves, from Fast 10, from Shots by Jack. We're also looking to onboard more creators onto our store. So if you want your own merchandise, if you want an easy platform to sell it where you have minimal input into all the crazy admin that it takes to actually get the stuff up and running and you want it all done in one easy place, then be sure to hit us up. We'd love to chat with some more creators and expand what we've already got. Don't forget to follow, subscribe, give us a like, comment below, all that kind of stuff. It all helps out and we appreciate you guys a ton. I hope you're ready to stick on this journey and see where it goes.